We've got a full house tonight for sure. Um, we're going to get started. I'm going to have Bambi talk a little bit tonight too. She was talking about an aha she had that was kind of going along with some, some of my stuff. And, and to some degree, I'm in a, not a strange place tonight, um, but a different place because it's in a way it's like, <coughs> in a way it's like, I don't know that I want to, I'm in this place where do I share what I'm getting or do I not? And I'll, I'll make more sense of that when I, as I go along here. So, <clears throat> last Sunday I talked about um, the game, Half Nelson, the Taurus, and things like that. Thursday I went over this, but I want to readdress it because some people weren't here. <clears throat> but let's just say there's a game board that we're all playing within, or on, uh, actually in really deep inside this game. And let's say that this game board, just like a computer system, is it's got a like a, like I've already gone over the 64-bit computer system yeah. that you would ha maybe have this kind of type of game in, and that the programs keep you being used over and over the same way. Um, so this toroidal field, which actually creates like this little cup, if you will, which I think is like the holy grail on a personal level. It's got this it's got this vacuum inside. This is called a torsion tube. It's spinning, and then you have this donut. Basically, a, a toroidal field is a donut shape. Then you, like you go into a little solar system, same thing. You got another torsion field, another toroidal field. Then you pull out the Earth, same thing. Human, same thing. So it's like this program that runs everything is stored within everyone. So let's say like source code or God code is written this program or this consciousness construct. And if God is omnipresent, then that code is in everything. So and we are so we're basically deep inside of a program, and we ourselves are part of a program, and you not only have access to the source code, but it's woven into your very being. This means you can use it. So everything is made out of and made in the system. So we have the Milky Way, the solar system, and you know I play with the words a lot. So it's solar system. Um, you know, when we look at astrology, how the astrology can really define a lot of your perso personal uh, traits and aspects. And interesting thing to me is, what's been coming to me is astrology is another program that we buy into. So basically, if your personality, if the astrology says your personality is this, 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 then whatever we know by now that we've been playing with this, that however you behave, there are mentally, emotionally, there are physical reciprocals to that, okay? So your personality that you have right now, you're going to have built-in physical limitations as a result of that. Does that make sense? In other words, getting out of any physical limitation means getting out of certain things completely. Um, and certain I'm, things about your personality? Certain things about your personality. And e e what I'm really talking about e is even going beyond what we'd consider astrology. Mm -hmm. Like this is what it, it is, here's your personality, Go working beyond that. And I think if you're in this group, then you're, you're, you're on that level anyway of trying to see past the current limitations that we bought into. Astrology is actually a program that within it has limitation. You are this person. You are this thing. You're going to have this physical reaction. Capricorns relate to knees. Taurus is about the neck. Uh, heart is about Leo. All these different aspects are affected by your astrology. Not just astrology, but that's just one of a myri myriad of programs that we're born into. So it's like we come in through this system. But the cool thing about it is that we have access, since, since we are made out of this exact same stuff, then it's a two-way street. Okay, It's not just the universe telling us what's going to happen to us. We can also work with that system. Um, and our ancestry is another program that we receive. So programs in the source code. It, the, the source code is uh, what writes the programs and they are in every one of our cells, our DNA, it's the instructions uh, that we, the instructions flow in our blood. So you know we hear those uh, terms like you know this is the code I live by, like a belief system is a code. Well the astrology is certain codes that lock you into personality traits but those things I believe can be loosened after a certain amount of time, whether you've gotten the gotten what that program has made you get by limiting you, you know, it's put the limitation pushes you to go beyond yourself. My personal belief at this moment, and that can change tomorrow, is that we are in we, we come into limitation to move beyond it. To to have an experience that pushes us beyond our limitation. 
And the thing about programs is they tend to lock you into repeating, repeating certain patterns or limiting choices. And that's the tricky part is getting out of the repeated pattern that keeps you making certain choices. And we're going to go over choices again here in a second. So programs equal creation. Your programs, your astrology, your ancestry make up your body, your, your physical, and that in the body is also physical malfunction. And, or physical malfunction comes from the limiting programs, for example, that come from astrology. So anything that tells you that you're limited in some way, or this is your personality, for example, if I believe I'm going to have to hold everybody up in my life, I may have shoulder issues because of that. Okay? If I believe, um, like astrology-wise, I'm here to work, 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 then that's going to have a physical uh, reciprocal also. Um, we're also going to go into a little bit of, uh, I pulled another Matrix clip out, I really liked and I'd forgotten, you know, when you go back and look at certain things, you forget just how many layers can be in a, in, in a certain thing. And the clip I'm going to show you in a second actually talks about writing a line of code and how that code would affect somebody. So whatever you take in via the five senses are programs. So when you eat something, Deborah brought in this seed the other day that started to sprout. This program that's in the seed, the seed knows what to do, right? It becomes a particular thing. So by the time this program reaches its apex, if you will, it creates a flower or a result and there's information in that. So whenever we eat something, using the analogy of the computer program, we're basically eating information and that information is then transferred to our cells and causes a negative or a positive reaction. So um, certain plants are healing because that's programmed into them. Um, you want to be conscious of what you put into your mind uh, via whatever you eat, you hear, you see. It's really important to, to guard what you put in. And this is where I'm coming now. Conscious choice is the key to changing a program and your DNA, the physical manifestation. So it's conscious choice plus, plus faithful action. And this is, I think, where I and a lot of us tend to, to fail or come up short, is the faithful action. We may be used, we may do, doing a lot with our conscious in our mind, but the faithful action is where we tend to lack. Though, yeah. Could you please give an example of faithful? Uh, yeah, I, I'm going to do that. And so, so you have conscious choice plus faithful action equals changing the information or your manifestation. For example, let's say you're saying, I'm, I'm unlimited, I'm wealthy, I'm prosperous. Okay? And then you're going along and you get a bill in the mail and then your thoughts or your actions start to contract around that. It, in other words, it's like you start causing these through your thoughts. <coughs> thoughts are also actions too. Okay, so here you are. You're saying I'm wealthy, wise. Or let's say wealthy. I'm wealthy. Here comes that bill, and then how you react to that bill on a mental, physical, and emotional level is affecting what you're putting out. And I, let me try to put that into and let me put that in a better way so you can understand the the, <coughs> the faithful action. Um, Food is one way. I'm trying to make it a little more. Let's say I'm going to be open and loving in relationships, okay? You're, you're sitting here working consciously. I choose to be open and loving in relationships. Your actions got to follow through with that. So if all of a sudden you find that you're not making the choices that are making you open and loving in a relationship, then that's not, that's not following through all the way, right? Because there comes a time in certain aspects where we're here, here we are tapping all this stuff, but then there comes a time where we have to take action. Can you say congruently? Yeah, exactly. That's a good point, Beth. Y your your behavior is congruent with what your thoughts are, and we tend to we tend to do this either way. You know, it's like we'll think something but not do it physically. We'll not take the action. Uh, for example, let's say that you are in a relationship. It's run its course. You're done. You've tapped on stuff. You're aware of things, but then your actions don't follow through. You're not getting out of the relationship. You're not you're not following through with that choice. And when you start doing that, what happens is instead of spinning out light, you start to actually start spinning out darkness because you're staying in a situation where all of a sudden where you're, you're coming from this opening loving place, I'm learning something, I'm getting something, I'm helping this person, and then what happens as soon as your feelings start being resentful and angry and, you know, and, and putting towards that other person, you start creating negativity as opposed to the positive energy. Whatever your belief system is in the way that holds you there. So our actions have to follow through with our consciousness. And I'll try to think of a better example. I had one Thursday, but I've forgotten my, my, my example at that time. Um, but I'll try to revisit that in a second. So 
And now, uh, to bring this into full circle, this is kind of a second thought that happened to me. You all are pretty much aware of Drumbelow's, uh, the flower of life. Uh, the smaller one is the, uh, I think the seed of life, the flower of life, and the flower of the, uh, the tree of life. All, and what, tend to be, what tends to happen is everybody focuses on these little petals. See the petals within there? There's bunches of them. I just highlighted a few of them. But an interesting thing caught my attention with this a while back, and I just now am getting what it is, is if you turn this slightly on end and you look between the petals, what do you see? Yeah, they, um, little vortexes, oh, yeah. right? Okay. But if you follow all the way through, you get the vortex, the center, mm -hmm. the center column, and the circle, right? You see yeah. that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So basically, what you get a is a bunch of these. Okay. So the flower of <laughs> so the flower of life or Jumbelows, this design here, is basically a bunch of these stacked in there, okay? And they can be turned lots of different directions. You can see these trumpets are all over, right? Mm -hmm. You can turn it this way and that way. So imagine that here you are looking at this and you can see all the spheres that make up reality. It would look like that. There'd be a bunch of these just stacked everywhere. Just like looking at the solar system, you'd have a, a myriad stack of these little toroidal fields within that, within there. So to me, Jumbelow, um, T this ties into Nassim's work about the black hole heart being that energy, that toroidal field, because here you have a bunch of toroidal fields, even complete with the little, the trumpets, or you know what I'm calling trumpets, is a funnel of energy, and you get that little holy grail. It looks like a cup, right? Which I think is the holy grail, is that tube. And I'm going to revisit that in a second. I'm going to play this clip. This is relating to the food and what we ingest, rewriting our programs. And so it's important what you take in, not only what you eat, but what you see and what you hear. Let me back it up a little bit. You may have to read that because his, you know, he's speaking. His, his language is a little hard to understand, but hopefully you can read that a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> it is, of course, a way of all things. You see, there is only one constant, one universe that is the only real cause, causality, action, reaction, cause, and effect. Everything begins with choice. So here, what's really cool with this clip, and I forgot about this, is there, you're, you get, you're being presented with two different aspects, okay? One is going back to actually Zen, Bud Zen, Zen Buddhist, which is cause and effect, okay, karma. What, where I've transcended that, where I don't really believe in karma anymore, I'm more with Morpheus, because Morpheus said everything begins with a choice. This guy is giving the case about causality. Here's a, here's a cause, here's a reaction. My thing is you can have a cause and change your reaction with your choice. You can change the outcome of what reality may be going into with your choice. You're not frozen in it. Just like I don't think you're frozen into your astrology. Do I? You, make a you can have a cause and you choose what action to take. Yeah, yeah. Or, or you, can even ch you, can, you can even choose that that doesn't even affect you at all. Mm -hmm. That cause has no effect on you at all. So the choice is the freedom within that. No. Wrong. So he's, he's, so there's an argument here between one saying causality and one saying no. We choose our reality. There's the difference. Cause is, here's your astrology. This is what's set for your life. This is what's set for the world. These are the programs and the things that are going to happen in your life. This is the program that's going to happen in the world. And that's it. Or there is a choice. And we do have a choice in that we can change and direct that not only in our reality but in, in our bodies. Okay, that's my focus is always trying to bring it back to the body. Does that make sense? I'm more with Morpheus. He's saying no, it's all causality. Huh? Choice. This guy here is, is saying is causality. Is Morp causality. Morpheus is saying it's all about choice. I'm said sorry. I said, I'm sorry. Well, Morpheus is all about the choice, and I agree with him. Choice is an illusion created between those with power. So did you hear that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> illusion, I mean, choice is an illusion created by those with power and those without power. But my, my belief is, is that the illusion that we don't have choice was created by the elites to take away the power of choice. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. So there's the, there's the subtle difference. Is It's not like net, we have no choice and the elites let us think we have choice. 
our ability to make choices was taken away for whatever reason. I'm not going to go into all that crazy crap. But in mind games, huh? mind, through mind games it was taken away. Yeah, through mind games, you could say that. There's, lo there's lots of ways. But basically, he's saying that there is no choice. There is no free will, really. And that's just an illusion that the people with, pow would, the people with power let other people think. But my thing is, is you don't have any power unless you do have a choice. Now, I do like what he's about to say because he's going to make a good point about moving out of the old way into the new way, okay? Because I'm trying to transition out of a reality that is causality, which is cause and effect, into something where I'm more empowered, okay? Does that make sense? Because causality means you don't have complete power. I'm trying to transition out of that. He's going to show you through his representation of what he's doing here why, why we're stuck in causality, okay? So what he's going to show, in my opinion, shows us why we're stuck in causality. What you see, I have sent her a dessert. A very special dessert. I wrote it myself. He wrote it himself. <laughs> Each line of the program creating a new effect, just like... Okay, let me... Each bite. Yeah, exactly. That's what I... Mm. Each, each line of the program creating a new effect. Okay? Well, whatever we bite into, whether it's something physical, some mental concept, an emotional concept, we are letting that affect or write our DNA. Just like poetry. First, a rush. Eat the heart rotters. You can see it now, yes? She does not understand why. Is it the why? No. What is it then? What is the reason? And soon it does not matter. Soon the why and the reason are gone. And all that matters is the feeling itself. And this is the so this is why we're stuck in cause and effect, okay? One is we, we let our feelings completely run us, okay? That's number one. He's saying that's the nature of the universe, that our feelings run us. But that's the difference between an animal and a conscious being, right? Is we have control over our feelings. We struggle against it, we fight to deny it. But it is, of course, pretend it is a lie. Beneath a poised appearance, the truth is we are completely out of control. That's it right there. We're out of control because we let all these things control us. So we got to get charge of our belief systems and not let everything around us run us or then we are in control. He is true. He is true in one particular reality, but then there's another reality altogether. We are forever slaves to it. So there's no way out of it. We're forever slaves to causality. And I think that's the name of the game here. The name of the game is to evolve out of causality. Does that make sense? We're moving out of the reality where we are slaves to it. But here's the thing. When you play a game, isn't the idea of the game is to go beyond the current limitations? If the limitation is slavery, is every, every time you turn the corner, somebody's taking, trying to take your power away, your voice away, or whatever, isn't that meaning you're supposed to develop that very thing? evolve past it because evolve means to grow right when something evolves something grows it goes beyond its current limitation its current boundaries right our only hope our only peace is to understand it to understand the why what why is what separates us from them you from me why is the only real source of power without that you are powerless and this is how you come to me is that why? Is that how? Okay. So whenever we ingest things, that, so that, that video clip, I'd gone to that video clip just to show whatever we take in does rewrite us, okay? 
Just like with epigenetics, if somebody has an issue, never in, her, in the ancestral DNA that this person's never had a, uh, nobody in this ancestral lineage has ever had a cholesterol issue yet, let's say something emotional happens to a person, they begin to eat a bunch of fatty foods, and they rewrite their DNA from the habit. Okay, epigenetics, that's being proved more and more. You rewrite your DNA with not only a physical habit, because that's what they're focusing on. I haven't read this yet, but I believe it to be true, is that we also rewrite with mental emotional patterns too. Okay, But it's obvious now in science that physical patterns repeated write DNA, rewrite it. So epigenetics, you can look it up. Epigenetics is... So this, this person's ancestral DNA, no cholesterol issue. This person has an emotional issue, starts eating a bunch of fat. That rewrites the DNA, which then is passed on. That's how a trait then gets passed on. I think every physical trait is a mental emotional concept or issue that was never resolved being passed through the line. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So the programming that we grew up with, mm -hmm. we are ingesting without really knowing it. Oh, totally, yeah. And, and, and the crazy thing is, is that we're born into the system, and by being born into the system, we have, we have God code. Everything's written on God code, okay? But within that, there's other things that are written within the program. So, like I've been playing, what I was playing with Thursday is, imagine that you open up, like I'm, I'm looking here at Rick, I'm going to open up the, the deltoid muscle program. Shh. You know, and imagine, imagining in this all code, there's some lines that have been messed up. I'm going to those lines, and by the tapping, this is just my imaginary thing, right? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm imagining I'm rewriting the faulty program to take that out or write it over it. Okay, that's well, my that's my new focus. Have you ever seen the movie, the, the newest Tron movie? That's exactly what we. That's watched. exactly what. Yeah, I'm but then we watched that. He does that in, in that in that movie. Yeah, and and I watched part of that. I think I it's even yeah, in. Yeah. Part of that but our mental programming. The newest Tron. Uh -huh. movie, you know that we. From birth that we have because you know parents, right. teachers, teachers, right? You know the mental programming that we have. It's stuff that since we've been fed and is in our DNA, so to speak, right? That we're ingesting without knowing it uh -huh. is we have to go more than just working on a deltoid muscle or something to open you, that up exactly and stop ingesting that. Right. And so it's not just about okay. It's a, just a deltoid muscle. There's never just the physical body. Right. Because don't you know what? The physical body is the manifestation of the, of the sum of all your thoughts and emotions, period. The physical body is just a manifestation of what you think and feel. Um, so I'm going to go and show this Tron clip that they're talking about. So if, if you saw the first Tron, you know, he was the guy that, that um, helped write the program, right? So in a way, in this reality that he's in, he's God. He wrote this reality in code, right? This is his son. So in a metaphysical way, this is God the Father and God the Son, okay? So just, to, just if you haven't seen this movie, what happened is they were in a fight. They were trying to escape the bad guys. And she um, was protecting this guy because they have feelings for each other. And her arm got broken off, cut off. Okay? Oh. Uh, well, it, it kind of shattered. D-res. Yeah. D-res, yeah. Um, so they're trying to save, and then she went into like a coma thing. They're trying to save each other. And, and Tron, you know, they have these little discs. I think about these discs as actually being, a disc is like a toroidal field. A toroidal field is a disc, okay? So I uh, think about when he takes it off, they're gonna, he's going to look at the program and he's going he's gonna to take something out of the program that's causing the problem. And interestingly enough, where it sits is on the back side of the heart chakra. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, those cool reciprocals. So he's accessing her specific code. I don't know. I can identify the damage code. The sequencing is just enormously complex. But didn't you write it? <laughs> Some of it. The rest of it is just... There's your DNA. 
beyond me. Triple yeah, I noticed that. I noticed that. Yeah, uh, Stephen brought up a good point. You know, she has a triple helix, not a double helix like ours, right? All this time, you were just protecting her. She's the miracle man. Everything I ever worked for. A digital frontier to reshape the human condition. I always thought that was just a bloodline. In our world, she could change everything. So instant cellular uh, regeneration by fixing the code, okay? The other interesting thing about that that I, I just noticed is that I've, I've seen this movie before, but I don't pay that much attention. Once he takes the, un the, the bad code out, he kind of blows some of the code that's floating around the outside of the triple helix mm -hmm. and blows it into the triple helix to mend the, the broken code. Yeah. And in our own DNA, we have just floating DNA bits out in our cells, not not actually in the nucleus of the cell. Right. We have just little floating bits that are just kind of out there that aren't don't really do anything at this point. Yeah, junk DNA. Yeah. Um, yeah. So who knows how all that works and the intricacies of all that? Um, well, I want to bring in a few more concepts around that. Remember how the, uh, and then we're going to have uh, Bambi say, uh, say something. Um, so let's say this is the toroidal field, okay? And going back to what I shared in my last video around here, you have, here's the chessboard, the, ch the game, okay? You have female, male, and, you know, this is like the Torah here, this rolled up scroll, the Torah. It's like the information that we're getting from both sides writing out who we are. Here you have the Father Sky, Mother Earth, another yin and yang balance. Um, but what's um, coming to me look at the chakras a little bit different is, you know, of course, every chakra is a toroidal field itself, right? Okay. We typically see them sideways, though. So these funnels, here's the, here's the crown chakra, here's the root chakra, and the energy goes straight through. Usually they're depicted as being sideways, right? The funnel goes out. Front to back. Front to back. My, idea, my idea is that they are not... They are not solid and fixed. They're rotating all the time, okay? So what happens is the idea to be able to access your complete power or the core of your energy is that you line them all up, okay? And you can't access your, all your energy properly until they're lined up. So here's, your, here's see everybody see the little funnel, okay? We usually see them this way, like I have my throat coming out this way. This would be a side view, right? My hypothesis is that they're rotating like this, okay? They're doing this, they're all over the place. So I'm spewing out energy, it's not focused, it's not directed, every chakra is doing that. I only get to my heart when I line all of them up so it's one complete tube. Does that make sense? Instead of being energy coming up and getting lost this way. You don't have to... Kind of like what you do in Reiki. Hmm? In Reiki you, you line things up so that you yeah. draw on the energy to focus it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. So if, if, all if they're all lined up, you see how they would just make one continual tube all the way through, right? An interesting thing about the black mm -hmm. hole, remember we talked about the center of the heart being the black hole? See these little, these are, these are energy jets that are shot out. Just like the little tornado energy. And Bambi noticed that too, is that these little tornado vortexes are coming out of the center of the black hole, just like these vortexes are going through our entire body. So we don't have access to this creative black hole energy until all of them are aligned. So I'm going to give you an example of not being lined up. Here comes, see how now this one's turned this way, and this one's turned this way now, and this one's turned this way. 
here's all this energy coming in, it's flowing, flying, psh, then you get into the throat chakra issue. Then you get pulled into the game in different ways. You don't have any power, you've lost your center. Instead of having a nice energy that you can bring into reality, it's diminished. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So with every issue you have, you're being pulled and, pulled and tugged this way, and you lose the integrity of your soul and that in the integrity of this column of light. See how here they're all lined up again? Source energy coming through. And you know, in, in Revelations, they talk about wheels within wheels. Well, there's your wheels within wheels. That's your chariot right there. It's also, what the, remember how I said this was called a torus or a torsion tube? The whole thing is called a toroidal field. Well, what's interesting to me is the Torah is very similar to the torus, right? And the Torah had seven seals that Christ loosened in Revelations. He's, Christ was said to be the only person who could loosen the seals and open the Torah completely to unleash its power. Those seven seals are our seven chakras. And the Christ energy is being able to be in the heart in a non-judgmental way, period. Judgment, just like Genesis said, gen judgment, eating from the tree of good and bad, is what kicked us out of our power and out of paradise. So here's an example of being cut off. We've got our stories in our energy field. We're pulled this way and that way. And when we're disconnected from source, we need some energy. So we tend to need to feed off of other people. So like a solar system, uh, like, you know, where they do the solar uh, powerhouses, you know, they string a bunch of batteries together. We even see this in the movie The Matrix where the humans are being as, used as little cells, right? Well, we need to do that to manifest because we need the energy because we're cut off from it. So that's why we see other people giving us all these negative informations. They're plugging us all together to help create the thing that they're wanting. But the idea is that you don't cut off from source, you cut off from all these things that are trying to take your power, your old stories, people, energy, whatever you're seeing out in reality, and you, the main focus is to connect to source, okay? Connect to source, and the only way to connect to source is have all these lined up and be in the moment, in the now. In the past, in the future, that's where issues are created. So you, and yin and yang aren't really past and future, I just use an example. Here's the feminine, here's the masculine, the polarity, right? Here's the 64-bit uh, computer system, and it's binary, binary being black and white in this case. Past, future. When you're in your center, you're not pushed and pulled this way. You're able to maintain your course. This way, your past and your future are tugging at you all the time, or you're pulling from your past and projecting into the future. The idea is to be in your center. I was talking to Bambi about that, and this is this next part I'm going to share with you, or she's going to share with you, about ultrasound and then we'll then we'll move on from there so Bambi I just want you to share what you were sharing with me about okay. the ultrasound part how the whole thing in the game came about was um, how I knew it was true was because when you're doing ultrasound if you if you ultrasound at a 60 degree angle or less you can see I need like that tornado picture or whatever okay. or a toroidal field okay first there okay okay on that field right there if if i'm ultrasounding i'll just have to come up yeah you, everybody needs to look at you anyway they're all looking back and so though. if your ultrasound is looking here anywhere along here you, you're looking down through you don't see this hole. I, can I suggest one thing, baby? Okay. I think I think that's going to blow them because they don't get ultrasound. I think really, if you describe the blood vessel, okay, we'll come. Look at, if you look at a tornado, if you're looking at a tornado and it's spinning around. If I'm looking at the tornado, I cannot see through it. Mm -hmm. Anywhere that I'm looking at the tornado from a periphery, I cannot see through it. Even though we all know there's a hole in the center of it, right. where it's calm and still. So if we're looking at it, it anywhere on the side of it right. you you can you cannot see through it but now let's say i'm ultrasounding the tornado and i come up to the very top of the tornado what am i going to see the hole so what i'm saying of a, of a, of a right where you but the, the center the is actually creation right none of us can see creation because we create it does that make sense Hey, okay, if you if, maybe if you go back to the blood vessels, because that's this is okay. uh, why I'm, why I'm okay. telling you this is because this is the only part that blew my mind. The part okay. where you talked about the blood vessel not being able to see present okay. that brings okay. it home. Okay. okay. So well, I'm trying to say, but anyway, 
So what I was thinking about when I do ultrasound, when you get at a 90 degree angle on the very top of a vessel, you have black dropout every time. That's why you always have to ultrasound at an angle, 60 degree angle or less, so that you don't, so that you're always looking at the tornado from the side. But if you, and, and this isn't anything, when you come up, even this ultrasound will show you, when I come up and I go to a 90 degree angle, all of a sudden I have blackout because ultrasound can't even see it. All it's seeing is past and future. It can't even see the present. The present. And, and even on your screen, you'll get blackout because this is where we create. And I don't care what you look at, you always have that portion filled and even ultrasound can't see it. That's what you angle it. So, so the thing, the thing is she's talking about, here's, here's, a, here's, a blood, right. here's a blood vessel. Blood is flowing through the blood vessel, right? She says if you look straight at the blood vessel, like at the very moment now, you can't see anything. It's no, n nothing it's shows up on the screen. So what happens is she, she has to go in at an angle, okay? And when you go in at an angle, you're mixing past and future, which then gives you a picture. If you're in the moment, everything is in, the, is in now. It's coalesced. It's, it's, it's like that being in that moment of invisibility. You're in the moment now. But in order to see something, in order to see reality, you're looking from your past or projecting into your future, okay? So this place of creation that we want to be in is, is not dealing with any past and not dealing with any future. And when she was talking to me, what came to mind is there's this whole macrobiotics diet thing, which is very, very intense. And one thing that came to mind when she was talking is like even cutting vegetables, you cut them very specific, like a carrot. You cut it at an angle to get yin and yang, okay? Instead of just cutting like we do and you get a little the eyeball, eye, uh, you know, you cut it at an angle. So, but if you come in here and cut straight through this, you're in the moment in the now, and the moment in the now is a, is a, is a split second of non-creation, okay? And another analogy that Bambi used was the white room in the matrix. So are you with me so far? If you're looking straight down at this vessel, and if you're looking at this vessel right in the moment, it is it invisible. But if you look at an angle which involves past and future, you see it. So our reality, what we're, what we're seeing is a result of what we're projecting from our past into the future. If you can be in the moment and not have any concepts, you know, which is pretty, quite a bit to ask, that's where the creation's happening. So we're always creating in this space, but it's based on projections or perceptions from the past. Yeah. Could you not relate this to like being in the zone? Have you ever had a day? Well, yeah. See, let's see what I, see what I wrote right here. The null zone. Okay. The null zone. There's actually a, you know a thing in, um, in in the astrology, the huge thing of the astronomy. It happened to me the other day. It was like I went to work and I did all my my work and I looked up and it's noon and I'm like, how mm -hmm. could this possibly have happened? They talk about being in the moment, and in the moment, the whole concept of time, you know, what's happening, that, that's it's like all, it it's all, exist. well, it's all relative, it's all relative. I mean, and, you know, just like, for example, if you're doing something you don't like, how they say, you know, when you, you know, time flies when you're having fun, it's true. When you're, when you're having fun, typically those things go by fast. If there's something you're dreading, it slows down. Time really hasn't changed. Your perception is altering what's going on around you. So, um, this analogy here that Bambi brought up, I, I got the clip for her is that she's talking about this space being the load the load the program space in the matrix where there's nothing there okay yeah you in the white room yeah you can load whatever you, you can you can load whatever you want in the room if you can get to the room the thing is is most people are coming from the past or the future and you're not in the room so you can't project into reality what you want but if you can make the room by being in the moment This is the construct. It's our loading program. We can load anything from clothing to equipment, weapons, training simulations, anything we need. Right now, we're inside a computer program? Is it really so hard to believe? Your clothes are different, the plugs in your arms and head are gone. Your hair has changed. Your appearance now is what we call residual self-image. It is the mental 
That residual self-image, I think, is what keeps us having certain problems, too. You keep seeing yourself the same way. Well, you got to get in that space and change how you see yourself. The negative, the mental, emotional, all that's being affected. And if you accept astrology program into you, which we all did, that is in us, written on us, is that's affecting us from moment to moment. So I think the key would be to get in that null zone place where you are free of what's being projected onto you, written onto you, and you're writing more of what you want. Projection of your digital self. This isn't real. What is real? How do you define real? If you're talking about what you can feel, what you can smell, what you can taste and see, then real is simply electrical signals interpreted by your brain. This is the world that you know. The world as it was at the end of the 20th century. It exists now only as part of a neural interactive simulation that we call the matrix. You've been living in a dream world, Neo. So this null space is the only place that the I am resides. The only place. Your I am doesn't reside in the past because the past there is no such thing as past. Think about it. There's only one ever real moment. Right now, that's it. it. Is my past happening right now? Well, in some concepts, they would say yes, but really, no, right? And is, is the, my, has my future happened yet? No. But if I'm basing my, what I have experienced in my past, I'm projecting it in the future, it can't help but write some of that of what I've been projecting into the future. If I want to change that, like Bambi shared, you want to be in that null zone where the this, this space between past and future. You're not coming from both, because if you're coming from both, um, you, you miss the picture, or you're, you're, you're putting in a picture that you maybe you don't want to have. It's tainted. It's tainted, very good example. There we go. Right, but the, the point I wanted to make was that nothing can take a picture of that zone, nothing, because you're creating whatever comes out of it. Even that ultrasound, when I, when I ultrasound a artery or vein or whatever, when I'm hitting at a 90 degree angle, there will, nothing will show on my screen, nothing but black. What happens when you, like that's 90 degrees, what if you hit it this way, straight on the end? If you hit it looking down the hole, you'll see a circle. You will, okay. But when you're hitting it at the 90 degree right. angle, when, when let's say that, that you're hitting a, a artery or vein that's coming like this, mm -hmm. you're hitting it straight on, you will see black, only black because that is the now, that's your creation, And, an and another analogy that... Um, Bambi, and that shows that it's real because it can't see it either. And the Bambi, what Bambi, another concept Bambi brought in is that gap is like the synapses between your nerves, right? It's like, this is the place of creation, of hormones and everything else. In this space is what creates reality. If you're caught up on one side or the other, then basically, you're putting, you're going by past experiences, your programs, whether it's astrology, ancestry, whatever, is writing what's going to be happening to you. So you're stuck in the land of causality when you're doing that. Why I'm saying all this is to bring it back to one particular thing which I'm always looking for, which is my thing, is that our body is the mirror uh, simply of the mind and the emotions. You don't have to go too, too far to see where you're screwed up because it's right in your body, right here, right now. It's it right in front of you. It's telling you what's going on and what needs to be changed. Um, I'm going to read you one thing that I found. I'd lost for a while and I think it's really good. And uh, I don't even know where I got it from. All I have is the two pages. It says, the mass media shapes the average man's beliefs which in, sh which in turn shape his reality. By lying, allowing yourself to ingest these programmed messages of fear, you unwittingly let the elite mold your opinions, beliefs, and reality. Wake up, create your own dream, or fall into someone else's nightmare. There is, no, there is so much writing on the decisions we make right now. Each of us has the power to affect the future of this world. Each of us, through our own individual beliefs, thoughts, and actions, has the power to change the collective timeline of this planet and beyond. Everyone, everything we do or fail to do 
matters immensely because Earth is currently at a fork in the road, teetering on the fence between two vastly different futures, one driven by fear, darkness, and uh, tyranny, and another full of love, light, and freedom. Which will it be? That is solely up to each and every one of us. So, because basically the majority rules. It's we the people, and that's very true. But people have tried to even take that concept out of reality. But it is true that we the people write what happens. Um, in, a ver in a strange and magical way, both futures already exist. In fact, every possible future that you can imagine already exists. This is because the universe is holographic in nature. Holograms are 2D images which appear to be 3D or real when you shine a light on them. So basically, this, to sum this up, is like where you shine the light is what's going to be manifested. So if you're fear, 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 that's exactly what you're going to pull out of the hologram. But what if it's happening so much faster than we, we, we think? What if when somebody puts an idea into the collective, we automatically create it that fast? I mean, faster than we even perceive right now. However, when you try to touch them, the hologram, you can put your hand right through them. Ancient, mysti uh, ancient mystics and modern quantum scientists alike now hold the same view. The material world out there is an illusion or a generated image. Matter is not solid, but rather condensed energy. Time and space are no longer absolutes, but really are rather relative to our perceptions, just like time speeding up for someone else or slowing down for someone else. We are projecting and creating our world as we go along. It's not set in stone. We're not set into, into what's been programmed into us. Because if we're part of the program and God codes and everything, then we have that ability to rewrite stuff too. Imagine the cosmos as a giant DVD that stores not only places, things, and sounds, but also situations, thoughts, and feelings. Everything that has happened is happening and will happen is inscribed onto the disk. Anything that can happen is encoded. What we experience as reality is us shining our collective laser like a DVD player onto a portion of the disc and giving it life. So it becomes really important for what you give life to. Okay? That's part of that action following through with your consciousness. If you're, if you're trying to highlight an aspect in your life but you're not doing the actions that follow through with that, you're not really staying focused on that particular thing. We are co-creators. It takes our attention and focus as well as our encoded information to mingle together to produce reality. The crucial po a point here is that we can collectively choose what portion to focus on. So in a sense, many of these famous prophecies are true, including those about 2012, Planet X, and the end of times. But they are not the only truth. They are rel realities that could happen but aren't necessarily going to happen. Prophets are people who have developed their psychic abilities more than the average person and have been able to catch a glimpse of possibilities or probable timelines. As such, these prophecy, prophecies can be regarded as useful warnings, but not something that is definitely going to take place. They serve to show us where we're headed if we don't change our course. They also serve another great purpose. Sometimes the mere mention of them can be enough to cause them to be averted. That's the great secret in all of this. We can change the road we're on, change the timeline, and choose a better one that benefits us all. Nothing is set in stone. What, we, what, we, what will take place on Earth in the coming years will be a result of our efforts. On, on the one hand, if we continue being ignorant and apathetic, falling into the traps of giving away our power, denying the um, atrocities going on, believing we can't do anything to change the situation and pretend and pretending it will all somehow be okay, then we're going to take the highway to hell, the timeline to, tyrant, uh, to tyranny. On the other hand, if we awaken and remember who we are, then we'll recall we have the potential to change what's going on. Remember, each of us is God, the cosmic force which split itself into zillions of spirits and particles throughout space and time. You are one such spirit. You are the creator, master, who determines what happens in your reality. You can have whatever experience you want to have. We all need to awaken and, rea and reactivate our amazing power to create and choose the beliefs and futures we prefer instead of being dictated to. How things turn out has a lot to do with us. If you don't create your own dream, then you'll fall into someone else's. And that's exactly what's been happening on the timeline up until now. As things stand, that, old, that other dream is a nightmare leading to slavery. Too many people have forgotten their own divinity and power, so their creative abilities have been siphoned off by the elite 
for them their own uh, for their own purposes. One of the main ways they do this is by controlling the mass media, which has become a huge brainwashing octopus with far-reaching tentacles, broadcasting mm -hmm. subliminal messages of fear 24-7. The mass media shapes the average man's beliefs, which in turn shape his reality. By allowing, allowing yourself to ingest these programmed messages of fear, you unwittingly let the elite mold your opinions, beliefs, and reality. They have an agenda of domination, and by getting you to believe that it is uh, inevitable instead of just a plan, you add your focus and creative ability to the plan and actually make it more likely to happen. This is the problem with watching the regular news. If you can lead, it can lead you to become apathetic, overwhelmed, and re, uh, resign to war and violence. This is also the problem with un unquestioning belief in apocalyptic and Armageddon-like prophecies. It can lead you to think that, that, is, that the end is near. They're all doomed, and so there's no, no point in trying. More disempowering beliefs wake up to the, the deception. The controllers are trying to get you to add your collective power to their nightmarish vision to make it come true. If there's one thing to remember from all of this, here it is. Do something. Your participation is required. This catalog is called to action, Urge, uh, urging you to join the peace, peaceful army of light warriors who have remembered their inner purpose for being here to correct the timeline and alter the collective road we're on and change the future. Don't be, uh, don't be a spectator sitting back watching TV as though they were TV entertainment. The battle is real and the, and the battle is real and hanging in the balance right now and your active involvement is needed to swing it in favor of a truly free world. Wake up remember who you are then you'll know why you're here and be able to do what you came to do here. If you don't know, find out now. Make Make it a priority. Follow your excitement. It's the clue to unraveling your purpose in being here. Time is running out. Peace and freedom need to be earned without your hard work, awareness, and love. We hope you use this catalog of famous tools to empower yourself and others. Uh, in all aspects of health, wealth, strength, and spirituality, use it to wake yourself up, provoke people out of their mundane lives, stimulate them to think, and shock them out of their programming. Let's Let's go. A brighter world is waiting to be created. I don't, I don't agree with every aspect in there, um, like all the elite stuff. I do believe there are people out there that try to direct our consciousness and control us, um, but you don't have to give your power to them. You know, it would be cool if we go up to a meteorologist and say, hey, dude, I really don't care what your weather maps say. You just sit there and say every day we're going to get rain, and then to put that out yeah. into the collective, and then see if it puts your energy in there to see if it actually manifests. That would be cool. Where did that? You don't know where you got that? I don't remember. I, that's, I had it for years. You can. That's kind of interesting. You had it for. Well, I'm just going to say this because, to me, I find this interesting that we're, where we are born and the things we are taught that are our normal, normal world, then you take the Indians who were raised in what they thought was the normal world, which was they had, they were friends with plants and trees and rocks and all that was alive and that they had power to come together and make new energy. But when you tell that to somebody now that that tree is your friend and that tree can help you, yeah get better, or that, that bush can help you get better because it has something in it that's good for you. They take you to home and burn. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah. our reality is we give our kids, here, play with these toys by play school. They'll make you smart. You know, and our kids grow up thinking that crap instead of throwing them outside and letting them come in with nature and learn a whole new yeah. reality. That's part of changing the reality is because we're stuck thinking in that play school thing. Yeah. That's good, no, that's a good point. <laughs> you know, you know, but if you look at the whole Indian thing, I mean, that was what's interesting is whenever, whenever when they had it, it was a whole lot better than since we've had it. Well, when, whenever a government goes in someplace, the first thing you do is you take the people out of their natural environment and you give them specific things you want them to learn. And that's exactly what happened with the Native Americans. They were taken off their homeland. They were given the certain area. They, they didn't have the connection to Earth anymore. They were then taught what other people thought they should be taught, right? And that was all the stuff that took over. And we, you know, lost touch with that. But to me, it's like a game to we can get back to being in touch with it. So saying all that, 
I'm not trying to get caught up in all of what's going on around me. Or, uh, warm. Oh, I'm going to let you 